welcome to the demonstration on the tools Link Layer Discovery Protocol, or LLDP, and Foundry Discovery Protocol, or FDP, that are available on Ruckus ICX switches. In this demonstration, I'll be showing you how to use these tools for data collection purposes, including learning the physical topology of a network and learning details about connected devices. I'll also show some of its usefulness in troubleshooting scenarios. First, let's take a look at the environment I'll be working in. I have a terminal application that allows me to telnet to each of the switches in my lab. Each of the tabs on the top represents a telnet connection to each of the switches, of which I have eight. Each of these devices is pre-configured with the basic configuration with three VLANs that are tagged on all ports, VLAN 10, VLAN 20, and VLAN 30, and of course the default VLAN 1. Now, if I want to determine the physical connectivity of my topology, I have two tools available to me on the Ruckus ICX switch. Uh, these are LLDP and FTP. LLDP, as the name implies, is a link layer discovery protocol that sends information about the local switch to a neighboring switch, and then listens to LLDP information received from those same neighbors. So that means it must be enabled on both of the neighbors for this to be useful. So let's start by enabling LLDP on all these devices. Now, in this tool that I use for, um, for this demonstration, I have a scripting feature in it that's really great. I can push a command out to multiple switches at once without you having to sit through me uh, making mistakes and typing. So I'm going to go ahead and open that tool here, uh, scripting tool. So in each of my switches, I'm going to run the config t command, and I'm going to run the LLDP run command. Always got to remember to put that let carriage return at the end of that last command so that it actually executes the command on the switch. Otherwise, it would just type the command and not actually hit the return key for it, and I'd have to go to each of those tabs and hit return. So let's go ahead and run this on all of them. And as we see, it ran on switch one. Uh, it didn't run on any of the others, or it did run on all the others as well. And we can take a look at those here. So LDP run is executed on all of the switches in the topology. So now that we've confirmed that, we could actually use the same scripting tool to run the command that uh, shows us all the information that LLDP connected. So let's run the show LLDP neighbor. So now we've run that command and we get some output from each of the switches. So let's see, I'll, I'll just take a quick look and make sure we got something from each one of these switches. Uh, yes, we did. So we have a lot of information about neighbor states. So now we can use this information uh, to start building out a topology. So uh, I have a, a paint application up here I'm going to use, and we're going to kind of draw this out as we go uh, and start showing what this network looks like. So what we get out of this output of show LODP neighbor is that on our local port, port 111, uh, we have a neighbor with this chassis ID, the port ID, and the port description, this is the neighbor's port. So my port 111 on switch one is connected to port 111 of switch two over here. So let's go ahead and draw that up. So we've got switch one and switch two, and pardon how uh, terrible these things look, but that's okay. Uh, let's see, so that is port one on both devices. So switch one to two on port one. Uh, we've also got on port 5 a connection to switch 3 on its port 5. So luckily I made this easy and uh, these connections are going to match up port to port just so that you don't have to watch me draw too many things on this uh, page over here. So now we've got switch 3. Uh, we've got a link to it. And it is on port 5. Okay. So we've got connections from switch one and the neighbors that it knows of. It's connected to switch two and switch three. So let's go take a look at switch two and see what it has connections to. So we know about this 111 connection to switch one, but here are some new ones. So on port three of switch two, it's connected to port three of switch three. So let's go ahead and draw that line. Uh, so we've got a link from two to three and that is port 3. And we have another link here on port 5 from switch 2, connecting to port 5 on switch 4. So we've got 2 to 4, so this will be switch 4, 
we'll connect our link and it is port 5. Okay, so that's switch 2, that's switch 2's known connections. We'll jump into switch 3 and take a look at what it's connected to. Uh, from switch 3, we know we have this port, port 3, that connects to switch 2. We know about this port, port 5, that connects to switch 1. But we have another one here, port 23, that connects to switch 7. So let's go ahead and draw that in next. Uh, this will be switch 7. This will be port 23. And we'll make the link here. Okay, so switch 7. And uh, let's jump in next. So that's all the links on switch 3. We have three links, 1 to 2, 1 to 1, and 1 to 7. Uh, let's go into switch 4. And on switch four, we have two links here. Uh, that This one, port uh, five, we know about that connects to switch two because we've already gone through the data and analyzed what's on switch two. So now we have another port, port four, that connects to port four on switch five. So four now connects to five. Oops, let's delete that and get the pencil. So this is five. And this is port four, or switch four to switch five, and the port number was port four. Okay, now we'll jump over to switch five. And from switch five, we know about this link to switch four. So no need to document that one again, but we've got one on port five. Uh, connecting to switch 7. So 5 to 5 on switch 7. So port 5 to switch 7. Okay, so we have uh, switch 5 and 7. Uh, there's a 6 in here somewhere and an 8. So uh, let's just go ahead and jump into 6 and do these in order. And from switch 6, which we don't know of any connections yet, uh, we know on port 5 of switch 6 connects to port 5 of switch 8. So let's go ahead and draw that. Make this 6. And port 5 goes to switch 8. And we had another port that goes to switch 7, not switch 7 there, remote port 7, local port 7. We're in here, switch 7, and that covers everything we know from switch 6. Uh, we can go to switch 7 and we should have all the information we need for switch 7 here. Uh, we've got a connection from 7 to 6 on port 7. We've got a connection from on port 5 to switch 5. We've got a connection to switch 3 on port 23. Ah, but we do have a new one here. Our new one uh, that we didn't know about before, and this is because we haven't looked at switch 8 yet, is a connection on port 1 from switch 7 to switch 8. So let's go ahead and draw that. 7 to 8. Port 1. And let's take a look. We've already looked at 5, so there should be no connection from 5 to 8. But we'll jump into 8 and just confirm that it should only have two LLDP neighbors on port 1 and 5. So looking at switch 8, we've got two connections. Port 1 connects to the number 7 switch, and port 5 connects to the number 6 <clears throat> to the number six switch. So this is our complete topology. So using LLDP, we've been able to draw the entire topology of our network uh, with just LLDP information exchanged between these, these devices. Uh, now, this doesn't tell us about everything about the network. It just tells us physical connections between devices that are running LLDP. So if there are some devices, I know there are only eight switches in this network, but if you had some other devices in the network that didn't have LLDP enabled, they wouldn't report anything back to these switches to actually be able to draw this information. So uh, it's important to have this enabled on everything through the network if you want to uh, be able to collect this kind of information. Okay, so back over to our consoles. Um, we can look at some details about a neighbor um, over here. So we can do this uh, anywhere. Let's see, I'm going to jump into port 4. 
and we'll do a show LLDP neighbor detail port e one slash one slash four. And so this gives us a lot of good information. Uh, again, it tells us our local port. Uh, local port is port four. Uh, this is a single um, switch, single unit, and not in a stack. Uh, this gives us information about the neighbor, um, the neighbor's chassis MAC address. Now on Ruckus devices, the chassis MAC address is the MAC address of the first port on the switch, so port one. Um, and if you do the math here, the port ID is port four, and you can tell that just increments by uh, by four. <clears throat> um, we have a TTL, default time to live. These are adjustable. Uh, we get the system name back from this. So that switch that it's connected to is named uh, RKUS-05 on its port four. So port four of that device. Uh, and we get system capabilities. Now this is a, this is a good feature. Um, it depends on if the ICX switch is running switching code or routing code. So when it's only running switching code, which all of the devices in this topology are, it'll only say bridge capabilities. Uh, if it were running the routing code, it would show bridging and routing capabilities. And then if some of those were enabled or disabled, those would be the enabled capabilities on the device that it would report back. So remember, this is the neighboring device telling switch four that we're connected to what its capabilities are. Uh, then we get a lot of the 802.3 information about that port on the other end, uh, that it's auto negotiation enabled, all of the different speeds it supports, uh, and things like that. So it's good useful information uh, when you might have duplex mismatch issues or things like that. Um, they're not configured for link aggregation at this point, so it lists not capable, uh, lists the maximum frame size for the port and uh, the port VLAN ID. So uh, these are all, like I said, tagged ports, so they won't have a port VLAN ID because everything's going to be tagged. Um, and then it also gives a management address of the device if one is configured on it. So in this case, we have 10.10.200.5. So this is useful information that you can get from LLDP. This is all information that a neighbor advertises to you to tell you a little bit about itself and what its capabilities are. Uh, so good for uh, information gathering for potential troubleshooting scenarios like duplex mismatches and things like that. So uh, also lets you validate whether, uh, you know, your cables, if you had someone else run your cables for you, you can verify that they're connected to the port you expect them to be connected to and things like that. So uh, very useful information comes from the LLDP details command. So that's just one tool. Uh, LLDP uh, is, a, is, like I said, the link layer discovery protocol. There's also a, um, a proprietary protocol on our devices called the foundry discovery protocol. This name goes back to uh, the roots of the company that started building these switches and acquisitions and things occurred. And uh, it still kept its name. It's the foundry discovery protocol. And for us to run it, uh, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to turn this on and it's configured and enabled in the same way as LLDP. It's done with the FDP run command on the, from the global configuration context. So I'm gonna go ahead and run the script again, and we are going to execute that on every one of these switches in the network. So config T, FDP run, and I'll throw an end in there just to uh, get the prompt back to the, um, the privilege exec mode and out of configuration mode so we can see the screen a little more clearly here. So let's go ahead and send that script. Now, FDP uh, takes a bit longer for us to gather all the information uh, than LODP. LODP kicks off and immediately starts sending LODP frames out to neighbors and starts compiling that information. Uh, these are on a, on a timer and it's gonna wait till that timer ticks and then send off FDP information. So we're gonna wait just a couple moments before we run the show FDP neighbor command on all these uh, devices and see what we get out of it. So let's just make sure this did run on each of our switches. Uh, yes, FDP run, FDP run. Okay, that looks good. Okay, so let's go ahead and again from the script, we'll do a show FDP neighbor Make sure to put the return in there and send that script. So on switch one, um, and you know, if we can jump back to here, but we pretty much know what we're expecting. Um, switch one connects to switch two on one, one, three goes. To, uh, so we, we know a little bit of information here that we get from FTP, but there's a couple more useful bits that come out of this. Uh, so it does list the capability same way. 
But one thing you get out of this is you get the exact platform of the device you're connected to. So uh, Switch 2 is an ICX 7450-24P with PoE, uh, where Switch 3 is a 7450-24 that doesn't have PoE. Uh, so we can get information specifically about the switch. Now, this really only works because FTP is a proprietary protocol with other Ruckus ICX devices. So, uh, But it is useful information that you can see uh, what the cap capabilities of the connected device are and which model number and information like that. So we, we can get that from each of these. We can look over here at switch two and see we have the same connections that we mapped in our topology earlier, three, same thing, and four, the same thing. So... Um, just like with the others uh, with LODP, we can also run commands to get a little bit more detail out of it. Um, so with this one, um, we run the uh, show FDP entry command, and then we give the name of the device on the other end. So let's do that. And we'll do uh, RKUS-05. So we're using the device ID in this command to get more detailed information about the, connect the, the connection to that device. So what we get out of this is uh, we see the, the tag type, which is basically 8100, which is the default for 802.1Q. Uh, we get the IP address of the remote device. So this is basically information we got from LODP as well. Uh, again, we get the specific platform. We get the device. It's a 7450, uh, 24 port, and it's running switching. It has a switching capability. Uh, the neighbor's interface is port 114. Or I'm sorry, our local interface is 114, and the neighbor's interface is port 4. We get information about it being tagged and which VLAN it's tagged in. So that's actually kind of interesting. Uh, I said at the beginning, all of our devices are tagged for ports 10, 20, and 30. Uh, so perhaps my script didn't run on all the devices when I did this. Uh, but this is a good opportunity for us to show that uh, you, can, you can see information about which VLANs are where in the network or on which links by running this command. So it's a little more information than you get from LODP in some ways and a little less than others. Uh, the other thing I just want to point out here is you can also get the firmware version that's running on the neighboring device. So that's that's helpful as well, potentially, um, if you can find a device that's running you know, really old firmware or something a little more current and uh, maybe why you might see some changes in behavior you know, when configuration commands change slightly or functionality changes slightly from one revision to another. So uh, good information, but uh, let's let's take a look at this thing. So um, right now we are running on switch four and I should have three VLANs on all these devices. So let's just do a show VLAN brief right here on switch four and show that, okay, I do have four VLANs configured, the default VLAN, VLAN 10, VLAN 20, and VLAN 30. And I'm gonna just run the uh, regular show VLAN command. And I'm going to see uh, on port 4 which ones I have enabled. So port 4 is on VLAN 10. We'll look at that. Port 4 is tagged on VLAN 20. And port 4 is tagged on VLAN 30. So on this switch, I'm tagged on this port connecting to switch 5 on all three VLANs, 10, 20, and 30. But from uh, FDP, I got feedback from that device that it's only configured for VLANs 10 and 30. So uh, let's just jump over there and take a look and see what our problem is here. So I only have three VLANs. Um, 1, 10, and 30. So VLAN 20 didn't even get configured here. So it might be something with my script or something like that. But uh, I want to go ahead and fix this problem. VLAN 20, and I'm just going to tag all the ports on the switch. Okay, now they're all tagged. So let's go back over here. And we'll, we'll give this a second because it might not report that immediately. Um, but let's do a show, or let's just do the up arrow so I don't have to type it again. So here we go. Uh, so the output now for our neighbor, uh, switch 5, shows that we are tagged.
tagged for VLANs 10, 20, and 30. So now it's tagged in all the appropriate VLANs. So I should probably go through and all of them, through all my other switches and make sure that they have all the right VLANs that I expect to have in here and maybe do some inspection on why they didn't come up in the first place. But uh, that is the type of information we can get using these tools that are available, these link layer discovery tools. Um, they give us information about you know, what's connected to each port. They give us details about the port's capabilities. Uh, in FTP, we get VLAN information and we get information about the specific switch model. We get uh, information about the code version it's running. Uh, from LLDP, we get other information as well. We get whether it's a link aggregation port and some other things. So um, combined, you get a really complete picture of everything that's going on. So, you know, go ahead and enable both of these on ports throughout your network and it'll be very useful in data gathering gathering and troubleshooting for you. So that's the presentation and demonstration on LLDP and FDP. Uh, appreciate you taking the time to listen. Hope you enjoyed the presentation and hope you come back for more soon. Thanks.